Hey everyone, Victor is here, and in this video I want to talk about the transition states. And not just the transition states themselves, but rather how to properly draw those transition states on the test. So let's start by looking at, well, hopefully a familiar example, a simple SN2 reaction in which I have a reaction between this uh, methyl iodide over here and methoxide, and as a result I'm going to get an ether and I minus floating around which we don't really care about. Now, mechanistically speaking, this reaction is going to be fairly straightforward. Oxygen is going to be our nucleophile, it's going to provide that electron density kicking the iodide iodine out and giving us our final product right away. Now, we are doing two very important things in this reaction. First of all, we are making a new carbon-oxygen bond and at the same time we are breaking carbon iodine bond and both of those processes they happen simultaneously which means that we have to represent both of those things in our transition state as we are not making any intermediates in this reaction and everything happens at the same time so to draw my transition state what i'm going to do here i'm going to start by showing well my carbon atom and then uh, I'm going to show this long carbon-oxygen bond as a dashed bond because we are in the process of making that bond. It's not quite there yet, but we are making that. Likewise, I'm going to represent the bond between the carbon and iodine as the long dashed line as well because I'm in the process of breaking that bond. And of course, my carbon still has those hydrogens, so I'm going to show those hydrogens as well. Now, when it comes to those dashed lines, I want to read iterate one more time that when we are using the dashed line here, we are showing the process of breaking a bond and making a bond. So in other words, those dashed lines, they represent those sort of partial bonds that are currently in the process of being either made or broken. Now, coming back to my uh, depiction of the transition state over here, I also need to indicate the charges on this transition state. So, since my oxygen is in the process of giving away its electron density to carbon, I'm going to show a partial negative charge here, which I'm going to be representing by this delta negative symbol. Likewise, when it comes to my iodine, the iodine is currently in the process of dissociating and gaining the negative charge, so I'm going to give it a delta minus charge as well, because it's not quite fully negative yet, it is in the process of gaining that negative charge. And also one other last thing that I'm going to show on this picture, on this scheme over here, is that when we are dealing with our transition states, we are commonly going to be showing those in those square brackets with this crossed equal sign over here, which represents the transition state. So, whenever you see this symbol, it always represents the transition state. Interestingly enough, in some older literature, this symbol is called a double dagger, which comes from the old typesetting limitations, uh, where the crossed equal sign just was not a thing, so they used two small dagger symbols, one on top of the other one, making this kind of look like a crossed equal sign. So we traditionally call this symbol as a double dagger. This is kind of cool, but I digress. Look it up if you are curious. Now, coming back to my transition states here, another thing that I want to mention is that the proper geometry does matter here. So, for instance, coming back to my SN2 reaction here, we know that the SN2 is a strict backside attack, which means that the bond angle between those two bonds that we are making and breaking at the same time must be 180 degrees. And while some instructors might might not care about that, in most cases, or I should probably say in many cases, it is going to be a big deal and it will cost you points. So if, let's say, you were doing it on a test and, let's say, you drew something like that, well, this structure is incorrect and you have the incorrect 3D here because the bond angle between those uh, two bonds, the one that is being broken and the one that is being made, that angle is not 180 degrees. And if you were to draw something like that, you are likely going to get most, if not 
all of the points deducted for this question. In some cases, it's not going to be as big of a deal as I've mentioned, especially when it comes to more complex mechanisms, but for simple stuff like that, that is definitely a deal breaker, so make sure you're being conscious about your bond angles when drawing those type of things. Now, with all of that in mind, let's look at the next example. This time, I want to look at SN1 reaction. And we know that SN1 reactions are multi-step processes. So, can we draw the transition state here? Well, yes, absolutely we can. The trick, however, is to recognize that since we have multiple steps, like in this case we have three steps, we have our step number number one over here, we have this one as a step number two, and finally we have step number three. So since we have three steps in this reaction, we are going to end up drawing a transition state for each of those steps. So looking at my steps here, my first step is just a simple living group dissociation or loss of a living group, if you like. Mechanistically speaking, it is fairly straightforward. It's quite easy. We're just taking these electrons that we have on our carbon ion iodine bond, and we are kicking those to iodine, and essentially we are going to get our carbocation, and also we are going to get an I-, minus. so I'm going to show this I- minus over here as the co-product. Now, in this case, the only thing that we are doing, we are breaking this carbon-iodine bond, and that's it. Which means that when I'm going to be drawing my transition state here, I will start by showing my carbon skeleton, and then I'm going to add this long dashed line between carbon and iodine. Finally, I need to indicate my charges. The iodine is in the process of getting a negative charge, so I'm going to put a delta minus on this guy, and the carbon is in the process of getting a positive charge, so I'm going to put a delta plus on this guy. And this would be a transition state for this particular step of the reaction. And of course, if you wanted to, you could add the square brackets over here and show the double dagger, but I'm not going to do this for these pictures. So I'm just going to erase that. Now, moving to my next step, the next step that we have here is a nucleophilic attack. So, again, mechanistically speaking, I'm going to have the oxygen attacking my carbocation over here, and what we are going to see in the process of this reaction is that we are going to be making a new carbon-oxygen bond. So, drawing my transition state, I'm going to have something like that, where I'm going to show the long dashed line between my carbon and oxygen, this one over here, that I'm creating as a new bond, and also I'm going to indicate the positive charges both on carbon, because the carbon currently is in the process of losing the positive charge, and I'm also going to show a partial positive on the oxygen, because the oxygen is currently in the process of gaining a positive charge. So, unlike my last example, in this example, both of my partial charges are of the same nature. They both are delta pluses. Now, moving on to my next step, that one is just a simple proton transfer. So, I'm going to indicate that this is a proton transfer over here, and what happens in this case is that the water molecule that I have here is going to act as my base and pull a proton from this H2O+. To show that mechanistically, I'm going to erase those two hydrogens, and I'm actually going to redraw them like so, showing the bonds, so now I can show how this water comes in and pulls one of those protons off like so, giving us our product, plus, of course, in this case, we are going to get H3O plus as our co-product, so I'm going to show it here in the corner as well. Now, in the process of this reaction, I am breaking an OH bond, and I am making another OH bond. So, if I were to draw my transition state, it would have to look something like that. In this case, the bond that I am breaking is right over here between this oxygen and the hydrogen, and the bond that I am making is, again, right over here between the same hydrogen and another oxygen. And since my oxygens are either losing the positive charge or gaining the positive charge during this process, I'm going to show the delta plus on one oxygen, and likewise, I'm going to show the delta plus on the other oxygen as well. Notice that although 
the hydrogen is moving from one species to another species, that proton has never gained or lost a charge, which means that in my transition state, I am not going to show any charges on this guy. And another thing that I want to point out here that the proton transfers, they are kind of like S and 2 reactions in the sense of the geometry and the bond angle that we are going to be seeing between those two bonds should also be 180 degrees. So, I'm still drawing that uh, from the perspective of the molecular orbital theory uh, in the correct way, showing the correct angles, although it kind of does make uh, my picture a little bit large and probably somewhat awkward as well. But as I've mentioned, some instructors are going to be very particular about that, so make sure you pay attention to those angles. All right, so keeping with the theme of the substitution elimination reactions, my next example here would be the E2 reaction. Now, mechanistically speaking, when it comes to this reaction, we know that everything is happening at the same time as well, so I'm going to redraw my molecules, and now here I am showing this hydrogen over here. So, in order to show the mechanism, we are going to show that the oxygen is coming in, giving the electron density to the hydrogen, the electrons move on between the carbons, and the iodine is our living group, so it pops off, giving us our product right away, and also my co-products. In this case, I am going to show this ethanol that I have just created, and we also are going to get I-, minus. so not that we're particularly interested in those uh, in those co-products, but I will just show those for the completeness sake here. So, when it comes to this reaction, what we are seeing here, we are making a new uh, oxygen-hydrogen bond, we are breaking the carbon-hydrogen bond, we are making a new pi carbon-carbon bond, and finally we are breaking the carbon-iodine bond. So, there are quite a few things that are happening here. So, if I were to draw my transition states, it would have to look something like that. So, looking at each of those processes one by one, what I have here, the making of my carbon-oxygen bond, that is this bond over here. Breaking my carbon-hydrogen bond, well, that one is going to be that one. Making a carbon-carbon double bond, we represent it right over here with a smaller dashed line, because, well, I just don't have space uh, for a big one. And finally, breaking our carbon-iodine bond, I represent it right over here. Now, in terms of the charges, the only species that either gained or lost the charge was my oxygen, so the oxygen has a delta minus charge, and the iodine, which became I minus, so the iodine has a delta negative charge as well. And since nothing else changed the charges or gained or lost charges in this uh, step of the reaction, we are not going to be showing any partial charges anywhere else in this transition state. And no matter how awkward that might be, I'm still keeping this angle over here at 180 degrees, just so I'm correct with my bond angles. And finally, my last example here is going to be the E1 reaction, which is similarly to SN1 reaction, going to be a multi-step process. So here, in this particular case, I again have step number one, I have step number two, and I have the last step number three, which means that if we are going to be drawing our transition states here, we are going to end up with three separate transition states. So, looking at my first reaction over here, that is just a simple proton transfer, to show this mechanism, I am actually going to redraw the sulfuric acid in a slightly different form, and I am going to show that this oxygen, the electrons of this oxygen, going to grab the proton from my sulfuric acid like so, giving me my uh, final product, plus, if I really wanted to, we can also show this HSO4 minus over here as our co-product. And let's actually take this guy and move it to the side a little bit right over here, so it doesn't muddle my picture too much. Anyways, coming back to my reaction over here, so what we are seeing uh, in this process, we are making a new OH bond, 
and we are breaking an OH bond. So if I were to draw my transition state, that's going to look something like that. So the OH bond that I am making here is this one between the oxygen of my alcohol and the proton coming from the sulfuric acid. And the OH bond that I am breaking here is the one between the uh, sulfuric acid and the proton that it is donating into our solution. Like always, keeping my bond angles at 180 degrees for the proton transfers, so I still have that uh, bond angle correct, and uh, the rest of the angles are more or less reasonable with how that transition state would look like in reality. Now, moving on to my next step, that one is going to be a living group dissociation. So, mechanistically speaking, like any living group dissociation or loss of a living group, this one is a very simple step. We just take the electrons, give those electrons to our living group, living group pops off, and that's all. So, from the perspective of uh, what's happening, happening here, that is literally the only thing that we are seeing, we are breaking the carbon-oxygen bond, which means that our transition state here is going to look something like that. The only thing that is being broken is the carbon-oxygen bond, so I'm going to show that as my dashed line. I am going to show the corresponding delta plus partial positive charges on both carbon and oxygen, because carbon is gaining a positive charge, oxygen is losing that positive charge, so both of those going to have delta plus, and that's about it for this step. So, moving on to my next step, however, I have a proton transfer. Those steps are always involving a lot of things, so in order to show that step, I'm going to draw that hydrogen and uh, water molecule, so I can show these electrons grab the proton, electrons move on towards our carbocation making a bond, and that gives us our final product, the alkene. So, the processes that we are seeing in this case, we are making a new oxygen-hydrogen bond, we are breaking the carbon-hydrogen bond, and we are creating a new carbon-carbon double bond, the pi bond. So, the transition state in this case going to look something like this, where if I, again, run down through uh, all of the bonds that I am making and breaking here, the making of the carbon-oxygen bond, that is this part where the oxygen comes in and grabs that proton, the breaking of the carbon-hydrogen bond, that is this part over here, and finally making my carbon-carbon double bond, the pi bond, that is what I represent with a dashed line between my carbons. And likewise, I'm going to show the delta plus charges on both carbon and oxygen, because one is going to be losing the positive charge, and another one is going to be gaining that positive charge. And keeping with the theme, I have this angle being 180 degrees as well, for the proper uh, bond angle orientation of those proton transfers. And as I've mentioned before, some instructors are very particular about the proper bond angles when you are drawing those transition states, so do make sure that you pay attention to how your instructor treats those types of questions, and how particular they are going to be about those details. And if there is one thing I wanted you to remember from this video, is that when you are drawing your transition state, every curved arrow will eventually become a dashed line representing either a bond being made or a bond being broken. So, for as long as you know your mechanism for each of those steps, you should be able to draw a proper transition state for each step in your reaction. So, what do you think about the transition states? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, thank you for watching. If you like this video, learn something new, boop that like button, and I will see you next time.